Hello, tele viewers. Yeah, good evening and welcome to this other edition of Prime Hour on my media Prime. We are sorry for the slight late start. This day we are going to be looking at uh, the opposition in Cameroon, whether they inspire hope for uh, better days ahead as far as uh, the Cameroonian uh, public is concerned. We also are going to be looking at Anglophone elite. Um, is there a chance, is there an opportunity for them to redeem themselves from the fallen glory? We know how they were uh, respected across uh, the nation. We know how they were respected across uh, these regions and divisions. But uh, today, uh, many persons are seeing them as part of uh, their problem. So can they redeem themselves? Uh, we are going to be discussing this with our panelists uh, who are seated already. Um, we are going to start with you, uh, Mr. Mofo George, who is a member of uh, the civil society. We are glad to have you with us uh, this evening. Thank you. Um, good evening to your viewers and uh, I hope I have a good program to I'm uh, <laughs> sorry that uh, I'm just bumping to the studio. We are enjoying your life in Guala because mm -hmm. we, we used to think that uh, the highway from my 17 to, to Bungo Square mm -hmm. has been transformed to one of the lives. Uh, we live primarily in Guala, so people are finding it strange whether it is an issue of poor driving or, or an issue of too many cars. No, um, I, I think that uh, it is a net consequence of uh, the ongoing crisis in the southwest, in the southwest region where almost everybody has left uh, Bangem, Kumba, all this, everybody is in Boya now. But paradoxically, Fako Division, except for probably Moyoka, if you go down to Limbe, is uh, it's calm. And you might, well, going down to Chiku, I'm not sure also there is that issue of a uh, traffic congestion. Uh, Leo, the issue in Boya, honestly speaking, is uh, the challenge of poor anticipation. Because when you even imagine that we have uh, what is supposed to be controlling traffic, the street lights, Mm. And uh, somewhere along the line, they are, they are, they are not functioning. Um, you start asking, how did they first of all come about to design those street lights? And you already discover that we don't anticipate because okay. COVID is about anticipation. Okay, even when they were functional, um, they were forty because uh, they, will, they will be there for oh, anticipation. Yes, <laughs> we are also in the company of uh, G. Lucas, all the way from Boya, also like uh, <laughs> Mr. George Mufa. We are glad to have you for, with us for the first time. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Liu. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my media prime is actually a great medium through which so many people in Boya are following. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the areas I always receive people who would say most of the programs I'm inspired. I have some panelists on the panel, and so they really speak, so they inspired me. I think it's a, it's a media which is widely being followed. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we are also in the company of uh, Christian Jock. He is uh, the uh, the big man of the party for the Littoral region. We are talking about PCRN. Uh, good evening and welcome. Good evening, Mr. Leo. Good evening to all of us. I'm very happy to be here today. I would like to greet my colleagues of uh, Ndiang Division who have been installed in um, the coordination departmental. Mm. PCRN. PCN. Okay. Donc, je salue tous mes camarades de ce côté et même ceux du FACO mm -hmm. à Limbe où j'étais avant hier. Ok. Um, we are also with uh, Tamai Javis. He's sitting in for Andrin at the Mebako, who is caught in traffic. He's going to be joining us uh, very shortly. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Yo. Good evening to the millions of viewers watching us. Good evening, Yaoundé. Good evening, Bamenda. Good evening to Moya and of course good evening, good evening to the Bishop of Boya, His Lordship Michael Bibi and the President of Cardiff University Institute of Boya, uh, Professor Victor Josgo. Okay, we are also in the company of uh, Padi Asanga who will be coming in from uh, <laughs> from Germany, uh, Christian. I, why are you laughing when I'm introducing? <laughs> Padi Asanga, Christian Joki, sending greetings. Hello? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. Um, can, can, do you get me now, please? 
Good evening and welcome. Yes, welcome, 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 Mr. Mr. Liu. How are you? Well, uh, you see, we are still very, very confined and the, the COVID-19, the second wave of COVID-19 is sweeping here. And uh, you can understand in what mood I am in. I am all clean because uh, we believe in the green solution to COVID-19. I uh, will start the discussions with you out there. Um, uh, do you think Cameroon's opposition still inspires hope in Cameroonians today? Um, Mr. Leo, the opposition is the opposition. Uh, when you have a government that has failed for almost 40 years, the last hope is the opposition. But then, uh, how do you get the opposition to work with the people? You have to come up with strategies that don't play into the hands of the government. And each time the, the opposition came out with strategies that would enable the people to come out because sovereignty still lies in the hands of the people, they get infiltrated by uh, pro-French and pro-regime proxies who masquerade themselves and uh, tend to be the opposition. So the solution is only in the hands of the opposition. Majority of Cameroonians are in the opposition, and they, most of them are silent, silent because they have not found a credible strategy or a credible, um, uh, what we call modus operandi, that will kick out Mr. Biya's regime. So we have to deal with the opposition and deal with the credible opposition. That's what I think. And uh, in the course of our discussion, I'm going to develop that with you. you I would never lose hope in the opposition because I am part of that opposition and if we fail, we fail collectively and if we win, we win collectively. So we have to move, put out, we have to clean our, 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 our sphere as we call ourselves opposition. You want to understand that the opposition is not a party, but it is everybody who thinks that uh, Mr. Bia's government and the, uh, the Mr. Mr. Hijo and Bia's government continue uh, continuous uh, has failed our people and we need an alternative. So the alternative is the opposition, but the opposition is not um, a continuation of the same system. And we, 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 we those very critical uh, persons in the opposition, we already know that there are some people who are working, uh, parading themselves as opposition, whereas they are actually uh, trying to perpetrate the same system Mr. Pia and Ahijo uh, planted in, in favor of France, Macron, and uh, uh, Jipon Moriti, who came to Cameroon. So you are saying that there is an opposition, an incredible opposition, which means that uh, some are not real opposition to the, the current government. Uh, Mr. Mo, when, 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 you see, when you see people parade themselves around uh, French flags, they go and pledge allegiance to Macron. They go and pledge allegiance to Jupon Moriti. Jupon Moriti, uh, Macron tells you that uh, they will release certain people and they will abandon the Anglophones who are in jail. What does that inspire you? What does that tell you? You know, politics is what you are not told. Don't listen to what politicians tell you, but ask yourself the questions that are left unanswered. What are the questions that are left unanswered? Why are Anglophones still in jail? Why is Mancho BBC, Ngali, Ben Terence, all those Abakwa boys of the Coffin Resolution, what are they doing in jail? Whereas people who were arrested and levied the same charges with some francophones have been released. Why are they still in jail? So you want to understand if you take the infiltrators of the opposition. That's okay. what I want to let you understand right now. Okay, the infiltrators of the opposition, uh, J. Lucas, uh, when you look at uh, the, the opposition as, I uh, don't know, uh, as a member of the civil society, mm -hmm. do you have hope in the opposition? Do they inspire uh, hope in Cameroonians even when you talk to people about the opposition today? Yeah, the opposition still has uh, a lot to contribute to the democracy of Cameroon. Mm -hmm. If we have to look back a little into the 90s, you realize that the opposition parties played a great role. We saw how uh, the government came to its knees at one point in time, thanks to the fact that they were working as a team. Though we had uh, fractions like uh, that of uh, my Gary, uh, I think, Habelo uh, Bubao, sorry, Federic uh, Kodok, who had to... Uh, 
broke out at a particular point in time, but there was still that hope because by the 1992, we still saw that the government at a certain point had to organize the tripartite. And, you know, for the fact that the 1996 constitution came as a result of the tripartite, which was greatly because of the pressure mounted on the government by the opposition party, mm -hmm. it tells us that we still have hope with the opposition party. What is actually causing Cameroonians or giving Cameroonians the, 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 the mind that the opposition party is made up of, 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 of proxies of the government is as a result of the fact that most of these opposition parties, I want to say that at, at a certain point, they themselves do not understand their role within the national triangle. I said so because, for example, we think that democracy is all about you coming and being too friendly or struggling to hook up with the maybe the incumbent or the ruling party. But in Africa, whenever you do that, it tells the people that, no, this is something which is not supposed to be. And most of the opposition party, they are yet to understand the, 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 the society in which we live. Sociologically, the African society is not actually pruned in such a way that when you see an opposition party, going always quite close to the ruling party, it means the opposition party is still standing its ground. In Africa, we have seen it time and again that most of the opposition party afterwards, they're always giving. They are, to me, like I always call them, they serve like proxies to the ruling party, which is the main reason why the populist would not want certain opposition parties and they don't believe that the opposition parties have a certain um, 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 hope that could uh, cause the populist to rely on them. But personally, I know that the opposition party, if given chance, they will do more. That is what you think, but uh, what is uh, the impression of the population, the common man out there, uh, Mr. George Amufo, do they think that um, salvation can come through an opposition party? Thank you, um, Kum. I think you are uh, asking a tall order question especially uh, from the perspective of perception. Mm -hmm. uh, we are talking about uh, beneficiaries of governance, mm -hmm. who, uh, who are the citizens and the rank and file. Uh, you know, your topic there is we uh, are for Cameroon. asking for a way out for Cameroon, and then you are looking at the opposition. Mm -hmm. I think if we narrow ourselves within the political framework whereby we situate the opposition uh, from the perspective of a political party, I think my response would definitely be not very sure that they are actually uh, indicating or indications that they can provide hope for the Cameroonian, what you call, way out. But if we look at the opposition from the larger perspective whereby you define some of us as uh, members of the civil society. I, I, I want to look at it from the perspective of people who are not in the mainstream governance, uh, not necessarily uh, way of uh, what you might call the CPDM, but the people who are supposed to actually be both within the parliament, the governance system, and those who are out of parliament, who are like the media, the the civil society actors as NGOs and other uh, operators. From that perspective, I want to say, if we look at it from that uh, largest perspective, we, there is definitely a hope looking at up to those people. Let me take a simple case in point. Um, why I say I don't have hope for the opposition party, it is, first of all, the current thinking or the current uh, uh, crisis that we have now, I'm talking about the health crisis, and with the uh, governance, uh, the government management of it, we definitely know of the situation where there's a task force in the presidency, and we have not had a counter uh, political party. Some of them maybe have what they call shadow government, and none of them have come out with their own position paper, which is an alternative to what government is proposing as a way out for the uh, uh, pandemic that we have. Because, uh, uh, Leo, let me just let you know that Cameroon government has an institution they call Lanavet. Lanavet is to produce uh, drugs and other uh, medication like vaccines for animals. Uh, I was discussing with uh, a biochemist the other day and he actually made me to understand that the same equipment and the same procedure used in preparing or producing vaccines for animals can be that those same procedure and method that can be used to produce vaccines for human beings. 
But now the issue is an absence of policy, of priority, of uh, giving uh, 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 the, 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 the orientation that we should focus on producing vaccine using those same equipment. And it, it made it understand that for the common person to understand. The same food that you eat is the same food that a dog eats. But now the way the dog is used in eating those food is not the same way that the human being eats, but it is prepared the same way because they're all having the same mechanism in them. That is the first. Uh, I was expecting that the opposition party, after the government process or uh, proposal on how to manage the COVID, would have had a counter and a structured uh, proposal or opposition that is countering the government position on how it is managing the, the, the pandemic. Up to now, we don't have any. What do we hear? We either hear either dismissal or having a quarrel about whether someone has stolen here or someone has not stolen there. And we've not had any counter, because that is the responsibility of an opposition party, to propose alternative to government policy at the time. Now, but what do we see now? Why I say that I have a hope now based on the look at bigger sense of opposition and look at what the media is doing and other civil society, what they call human rights and the rest. You see how they're actually challenging and bringing out a lot of hidden uh, weaknesses of the government's approach. Uh, discussion forums like this where you have special uh, 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 programs only to bring out some of those elements. That's mm -hmm. what makes give me hope that we okay. can have a hope based uh, on that, on that Christi uh, thinking. Yeah, Christian Anjok, uh, vous êtes uh, membre de l'opposition. Uh, vous croyez uh, que les Camerounais vous ont l'espoir en vous il a dit quelque chose qui n'est pas vrai. Tous les partis politiques au Cameroun ont au moins proposé une alternative. Le MSC, ce n'est pas mes amis, mais ils ont mis sur pied Survival, une initiative. Le PCN, pas le passé aussi, l'a fait. On a même proposé, on a donné un document, comme vous le savez, au premier ministre, avec des propositions. Comment juguler, comment changer la chose. Le PCN a mis en place toute une usine de fabrication de masques et des gels pour distribuer aux populations. On a même interrogé au Parlement le ministre, vous avez vu le, euh, le président Cabral, interroger le ministre, après le, le président du Parlement de l'Assemblée nationale, Cabral, il a commencé à dire, non, l'honorable Cabral ne tirait plus trop sur, sur le ministre. Vous avez vu l'honorable Jean-Michel Niché du SIF, par exemple, tout le monde interrogé. Ce qui s'est passé, on ne peut pas quand même dire ça. Et en ce moment, même on a interrogé sur la, euh, comme ça, sur la pharmacovigilance, sur nos euh, solutions endogènes. Qu'est-ce que nous on propose Vraiment, il ne faut pas faire ce procès-là, l'opposition. C'est vrai que l'opposition n'est pas une unité organique, voyez-vous. Mais nous, au niveau du Parti Camerounais, pour la réconciliation nationale, on a assez fait. C'est toi même dit qu'on a... Vous avez l'honorable Noura Nadouala. Vous connaissez la campagne qu'elle a menée ici. On est seulement à Douala pour comprendre jusqu'au sud-ouest. Elle est allée au sud-ouest. C'est ce qui s'est passé. Maintenant, pour revenir donc, effectivement, euh, sur la question que vous avez posée, non. Euh, il faut distinguer les oppositions parce qu'il y a plusieurs oppositions. Okay. Comme, aussi, comme, la, si, euh, euh, comme la la Je suis d'accord avec Paddy, c'est pour ça que j'ai ri. C'est le débat qu'on fait dans les groupes WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Donc, je suis d'accord avec lui. Il y a des oppositions. Euh, il y a maintenant, les oppositions se distinguent par quoi Par leur vision par leur idéologie et par leur programme de société qu'ils proposent des solutions alternatives et nous on le fait si bien vous voyez comment on propose, vous voyez comment on est par exemple en coaction avec le SIF avec Joshua, toujours au Parlement on s'entend sur des questions, comment mener des solutions, comment attaquer le gouvernement et là c'est visible, ce n'est même plus un débat à faire seulement il faut comprendre que l'environnement politique, parce que je peux comprendre les gens de la société civile ils ne sont pas confrontés à ces régimes, ces régimes essentiellement violents, essentiellement barbares où chaque fois que vous voulez mener une action, on s'oppose à vous, on vous tire, on vous traite comme des malpropres. Il faut comprendre que dans un environnement comme celui-là, il faut être essentiellement prudent. C'est effectif. Plus de trois quarts de la population camerounaise sont de l'opposition. En confiance à l'opposition, tout le monde, l'opposition, c'est quoi Ça dit que c'est ceux qui sont contre le régime mais en vous, place, mais vous contre les modalités. Non, seulement c'est que l'environnement politique mmh. ne nous permet pas toujours de gagner les élections. C'est mmh. taillé à la mesure, n'est-ce pas, du régime en place. Et aussi, on doit interroger cette population elle-même qui doit comprendre que elle doit prendre son destin entre les mains. Tenez, nous sommes dans un pays où on est près de 25 millions de populations. Donc, on est sensiblement 14 millions de personnes qui doivent s'inscrire sur les listes électorales. Mais depuis près de 20 ans, on tourne sur maximum 6 millions, 7 millions par là. Vous avez 3 millions de populations qui vont aux élections. Qu'est-ce qu'ils entendent en retour Forcément, le RDPC a déjà un substrat électoral sur lequel eux, ils reposent. Dans les 3 millions, peut-être qu'ils pourraient voter. Le RDPC peut avoir 1 million d'électeurs. Et comme dans un régime d'élection à pas de tout, nous, on avait 25%. Ils vous gagnent. 
C'est la légalité, même s'ils ne sont pas légitimes. On assume ça. On ne peut pas accuser. Il faut que le, les citoyens électeurs comprennent effectivement, notamment ces gens de la société civile, qui tiennent un discours destructeur. Parce que ça, ici, il faut le dire. Soit vous êtes des partis, soit, soit, soit vous êtes des adversaires des partis politiques, cette société civile, je vous okay. le dis. Soit, soit vous comprenez que la société civile a un rôle d'accompagnement, d'influencer le pouvoir. Si nous, l'opposition a un rôle d'accéder au pouvoir, la société civile elle a un rôle d'influencer le pouvoir. Okay. Et ce n'est pas ce que l'on constate. Donc, on constate que cette société civile est plutôt complice avec les autres, vous comprenez, ce discours qu'on tient sur ce plateau, que we don't have hope to uh, opposition. On va vers où Alors qu'on doit changer ce régime, sauf si ce régime vous intéresse. Ok. Uh, Andrin Atemi Bako, for more than 30 years, the opposition has been struggling uh, to unseat the CPDM party to no avail. What can account for that? Is it a weakness or a failed strategy Well, Mr. Liu, uh, that question, I would say that it's, uh, the answer will go to so many other African countries that we are finding the same and similar problems like the one we are facing in Cameroon. The analysis today have been that you can use the analysis of Nigeria to explain what is happening in Cameroon. You can use the analysis in Chad, Central Africa, to explain what is happening in Cameroon. So you come to realize that these are all common problems that Africa is facing. So I want us to look at it from an African point of view to pan-Africanize the question so that it doesn't only look as if it is Cameroon that is going through this particular problem. The problem is a global problem, a continent-wide problem that we are facing in Africa, especially in the black in the black world, this is not a common, uh, it's not uh, something very special, Mr. Liu. You see, the core of these issues we are facing in Cameroon, and it's very important for us to really understand. The CPDM, it's an organization of France to perpetually keep 85% of the population of Cameroon, Cameroonians in abject poverty for several reasons, because they want to have grip over the economy of this nation and to exploit its resources. Now, on this context, we have now opposition parties who are now contesting to change what? They are only negotiating to get a little part of that exploit which is carried out away from this country. And then you have this mass, ignorant, poor population that looks up to these opposition parties hoping that they are going to share some light. I want to go back to the genesis of 1957 of Ingwebe who opened the UPC. That was the only party so far that Cameroon ever had to fight or to fight for the, the, the emancipation, the political full rights of this nation, the economical right of our nation but that we saw that was eliminated by france now we have the current regime which i said that these are not elected leaders by the people of this nation these are leaders that have been appointed by the colonialists who have interest over its country so that they can use the government to have grip over the people and have grip over the resources of this country now let us go back to the opposition parties now, one of the disadvantages of these opposition parties is that the militants that are militating behind these opposition parties are people who got no will of their own, are people whose dignity and honor has been, has been stripped away. These are people who no longer have a future in their own country. When it now comes to time of election, the ruling party can always, I keep repeating, that is why ever since 1984, the same party has been ruling in this country with over 300 and something opposition parties have not been able to join all of it, match them together, cannot still in any election win CPDM. Why? Because they do not have the resources and the, how will I put it, the capacity to contest against the ruling party because the ruling party is being kept by another stronger hand, except that it is time where the colonialists want to decide who next is going to take over power. So when it comes to the period of election, what happens is that they can always buy the consciences of these voters who are going to vote because these are people who no longer find their future in their own country. So if they have a little opportunity to have a means to probably see some opportunity somewhere, they will seize it and sell out their bedright. That is a position at which, Mr. Liu, 
the system have kept Cameroonians, and that is why I say that if opposition, I don't have problems with opposition. Opposition are good in times when it is not a period for elections. But when it comes to period of election, there is no need for these oppositions to oppose or to go in divided ranks to the poll. They were supposed now to merge and bind themselves together and say, this is a time where we can truly affect changes. This is a time where we can really make the decision on where we want our country to go to. But they still go into the polls in divided ranks, which shows that the oppositions themselves are not out for the interest of the Cameroonians. And I'll go on to say this, that from the CPDM right up to the 1984 to where it is right now has only made life in Cameroon become very expensive for the Cameroonians. I keep saying that when you are dealing with an individual that has a third party behind controlling that individual, life becomes very expensive because it becomes like a middleman or becomes like a demarche. From the 1984 to now, Cameroonian or the, the, the economy of Cameroon has only be growing into mass poverty, putting the people under jurex, high taxes, lack of a, 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 a health sector. We don't have good education. We don't have good economy. All these things weighs on the common people. And that is why I'm saying that, take a look at Grand Luke Misalio. We had the, 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 the Grand National Dialogue. We spent billions there to no avail. The common people are only still suffering. We went down to the decentralization, people are still suffering, nothing is happening. We went down to the regional councillors, people are, they, 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 that is the, the suffering of the common people only keep increasing when the government keeps adding organization, political parties, churches, all those things rip away the little which the people could even grip on. So these are the things that I'm saying that it is easier, Mr. Leo, I keep saying this, than for us to have middlemen who have dual nationalities where they are, not, they, are, they are special citizens in their own country, and then they are second-hand citizens in another country. It is better, I would just say, that we have Macron to come and lead us so that we don't have middle person because the life is becoming too expensive where the middle man begins to negotiate and cut his own part, <laughs> okay, so and then what comes to the people is not enough. So these are the things that I'm saying that the opposition parties are not out. Nothing wrong for them to... I mean, create opposition is good. That means that all other opinions are going to merge to give the Cameroonians what they deserve, to come out with what is going to be best in the period of election when people have to go and cast it out their vote. The opposition at that period do not need to oppose themselves because they are going to be. Okay. They need to come together okay. and give the people what they want. And I, uh, permit me, Mr. Leo, please. We need to gain our sovereignty. Mm. And we have to re we have to regain that, and we have to fight for it and take it back. Okay, because it's not going to come easily. It's not going to come easily. Uh, Padi Asanga, um, for thirty and above years, the opposition has been struggling to take power to no avail. Who do you blame for that? Is it the population or your lack of strategy? Uh, uh, listen, Leo. Uh, there is uh, there is no political party that is called the the opposition. We should make that one clear. And uh, if people say they build civil society, uh, they should identify themselves with a political school of thoughts. Because uh, we can you can be of the opposition and you say you want to continue with Mr. Bias Jacobini system or do what happened in Burkina Faso. Just remove Paul to replace him with Maurice. That for us is not opposing anything. The, 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 what the Cameroonian people need is to overhaul the system, and overhauling the system is uh, getting and touching the constitution. And uh, I strongly believe that uh, we can throw tantrums at each other, but uh, if we Cameroonians who don't like the Jacobinists, Franco Franconized system or the France Afrique, we have collectively failed because uh, people come in and think that they know it all. And those who have been there crying with Moki Witaya, roaming the streets of Bamenda when there was the Anglophone crisis, roaming the streets of Boya when they were under the Anglophone crisis, um, going into Parliament, trying to push the CPDM one-party uh, system or with a best majority with some pseudo-opposition. And then we come and sit here and people tell us that the opposition has failed. But you want to understand that 
that parliament was is monocolored. Uh, it is multicolored. It's not monocolored. And when one party goes on, it can do parliamentarians that it has and stands there alone, and the others are uh, alive or do a, a position at uh, a geometrical variations, then they come and sit here and tell us that, oh, the opposition has taken. You have to identify who is what, what is the program that you have for the people. Uh, where I belong, I belong to that school of thought that I think that there is no compromise to make with the French as it happened in 1992. Because the modus operandi and the the the, the, the lie motto, the motto was a, a federalism and away with the French. Every Cameroonian UPC, uh, um, those fundamental Cameroonians, the one Cameroonians, they buy to that uh, rhetoric. But when people come today and they tell you that, oh, uh, we uh, CFA is a good thing. Oh, uh, we cannot do without France because France is our historical uh, economic and partners and so on and so forth. How do you expect those people who have been in the opposition for 30 years to work with them? Opposition is not a, is not a political party, but it's a school of thought that will permit our people to come out of a particular system. So when uh, uh, Ebako and all these people of the civil society are talking, I want the civil society to present us their political program, what they intend for Cameroonians. They should not come and say that, oh, uh, the people are going to parliament to go and do this. No. Or if there is no parliament, alternative to parliament is war. So if the civil society wants to go to war, then let them declare that war and tell us that they belong to those people who believe in war, and then they join them, and then we will on preaching our message that we have been preaching for 30 years. So the burden is shared, and uh, we, all of us, collectively, we have to take responsibility for what has been going in Cameroon. But not to say that the opposition, no. Opposition is not a political party, and opposition is not a political philosophy. Opposition is not a political program. We have to identify political parties, oppositions according to the program, and according to the projection that they have for the people in 30 years, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years. Okay, That's how identify uh, opposition. Okay. And, and put and mix apple and oranges. Okay. No, we are uh, that way. Thank you. Pa okay, Paddy, uh, thank you very much. A very uh, disturbing connection situation between us and Germany, where uh, Paddy is uh, talking from. But um, we also observe that there's a lot of fight amongst the opposition parties. Um, many persons are asking why they would not rather work for Cameroonians uh, but spend time fighting amongst themselves. Who uh, is their enemy? Oh, right, but, yeah. uh, well, we also have to understand that these opposition parties are human beings and they are Cameroonians mm. too. When we look at it from the point of uh, they fighting themselves, I want to believe that every human being is is quite quick to react when you stand against he or she. But now, what they also fail to understand is the fact that they, they have become a particular class of persons whom the populists are depending on, they hold, or they hold them with high esteem. As such, even if they have anything to do that has to bring, come out to the public, uh, it should not be things that will cause uh, the people to, to start losing trust on them. Opposition parties in Cameroon, um, except for the fact that uh, some of them really do not have a clear-cut program, and some of them, they are having a repetition of program, especially from that of the, the CPDM. Uh, like Mr. Mufo said earlier, I, I think uh, Christian also, he, he said something, he came in immediately uh, and tried to correct what he said. What, what I rather see here with opposition parties is that they have difficulties in, in implementing their programs because of the rigorous system the government has in place. And the first thing they need to look at is what to do with the constitution. Now, I'll, I'll still go back to the 90s. What happened between 1992 and 1996 to every Cameroonian and political parties, if they can go back to study it and see where they had their strength, I want to believe that they are going to make great strides and they are going to suppress the ruling party. Now, the problem with the ruling party is not really that they are too strong. The problem with the opposition is that they do not have a common front. 
if only they can sit up to have a common front then the ruling party is not as strong as they are now unlike the way many people had thought about it i have come to realize as a member of the civil society since we we have a lot to do with people and we talk with a lot of people i've come to realize that most of the people who have developed voter apathy is rather coming from the from from, from the opposition party not the ruling party mm -hmm. because when these fightings are ongoing the people tend to believe that there is no reason for me to go to the polls but if the opposition party they have a common front it is going to encourage that will spur the populists to see reasons why they have to take to the polls. I still believe that there is a way out in Cameroon through the ballot box. However, it is not going to be that easy. The first thing the opposition parties need to do is to look at what is required in the constitution for they to have a better place. If they sit and they think that is going to fall from heaven, it is not possible. The government is never strong except when the people are weak. It is coming from the weakness of the people. Now, this is, this, is, this is what is happening. These opposition parties have not realized that lobbying is part of opposing the government. And you have several ways you could lobby. Most people who have come to power, let me go back to the case of Andre Marin Binda. Andre Marin Binda had thought that immediately after the independence of La Republique du Cameroon in the 1960s, he was going to be the president. But that was not the case. People like Aijo had to go to France. They did lobby. And at the end of the day, they were made the president. Now, we have realized in Cameroon that France is actually the hand holding the ruling party. The kingmaker. The kingmaker. Mm -hmm. But what do we do? That's the big question. Should we keep on having um, some sort of, should we develop voter apathy because of that? No. I said it some time ago, especially from where I'm coming from. I said it in my 16. I think the last municipal election that took place, which was handed over to late Ekema by the current uh, uh, senator, I said it that if the young people would come out and vote and mount pressure from this base where the basic lawmakers will come up to go to that place where the, the, the government will start relying on, a lot is going to change. Let me take the case of the 90s. In the 90s, when these opposition parties had a certain number within within the parliament it was only obvious that the sitting government at the time had to come into certain deals with them just to ensure that they should have a majority mm -hmm. now the government could not actually succeed in the 1992 election but for the fact that they had to go into certain agreements with the opposition parties now this already comes again to tell us that the opposition parties have a lot of strength but the problem here is that is the division we have amongst them mm -hmm not the repetition of political opposi op opposing political parties mm. we should we it, for example if i were to form a, a, a party right now i would not think of coming up with just a party i could meet somebody like uh, uh, mr ebako i could meet somebody like mr mufo and say okay this is what i've identified you already have a political party these are my ideas the opposition parties in cameroon are focusing so much in removing beer but forgetting about the fact that the people down there where the lawmakers will come from, they need to understand what to do. Okay, yes. they need to understand what yes. uh, has to happen. Yes. Mr. Sama Aba Mugwa from Boya has this contribution uh, to make. Opinion with respect to the uh, first topic is uh, a bit mitigated. Mitigated because I am one of those who has always believed that the, the fall of the system in power cannot be exogenic. I've always believed that it will always be endogenic and that is from within its own system. It is a system that has created its own contradictions and its own internal oppositions which would eventually cause its downfall. The present cream of opposition parties that we have uh, with their resources, be they financial or administrative or diplomatic, uh, put on the table cannot and have not been able to remove the present um, system or or the present government. Uh, that is why I strongly believe that the opposition 
as it is in Cameroon today, uh, does not inspire and cannot inspire even in, in the furthest future. The only hope for Cameroon and Cameroonians who yearn for change and veritable change uh, is the eventual implosion of the regime. Again, as I said, the regime by its own excesses, its own ego, its own uh, errors has successfully created uh, contradictions within itself. And there are those contradictions that will end up crippling the system. Bear with me, and I say it with all authority, that we are living the after-beer era and the ongoing infightings within the system shall eventually lead to a breakthrough for Cameroonians. Uh, unfortunately, the opposition, as you ask, is largely... In, is largely divided into factions and can be classified under different um, headings. One, I am looking at the the system created opposition. Opposition parties that have been created by the system to give a semblance of the existence of a veritable opposition in the country. There are many of such parties, a good number of them. We have the hungry opposition those who have used their positions as owners of opposition parties and opposition ideas to, to look for survival. That's the survivalist who use it as a means to, for their own survival. We are looking at the opportunistic opposition. Those who are just adventurous and who want to venture into the game and hoping that some opportunities may fall on their tables and then we have the few the few who are the genuine opposition movements uh, who unfortunately are those that have been reduced to the fringes or the margins permit me say that um, much of what is happening within the ranks of the uninspiring opposition to has has to do with the manipulations and the machinations of the party in power, which is politics. And I have no problem with that. Uh, as long as I can put disorder in your house for my own uh, success, that is the game. And that is what the government has successfully done. Uh, impoverished the opposition, impoverished and orphaned the Cameroonian people such that it has killed the zeal of political participation in the ordinary Cameroonian. Uh, if you were to ask how many Cameroonians effectively register for elections, how many Cameroonians effectively take part in voting, how many Cameroonians are really interested in political discourses, you know, it is it is laughable. And so that's why I I I strongly think that the opposition as we have now, unless some miraculous metamorphosis takes place within its ranks, the opposition as we have now is largely uninspiring. And the only hope for Cameroonians who need... Okay, uh, thank you, the, uh, Mr. Sama Aba Mungwa. You followed him, uh, actually paints the picture as it is um, from an objective perspective. I don't know whether you agree with what he is uh, presenting out there, Mr. George. Um, partially. Uh, okay. You see, again, um, let us extrapolate a bit and look at, uh, because I'm happy uh, when we are talking here, especially using opposition generally to mean political parties mm. and then let's take a case of a party which i will consider an opposition party on its uh, results from the days uh, multipartism was introduced in this country that is the Cameroon democratic union now the let us look at their their work because if a political party essentially is supposed to be for electioneering and they have been Demonst uh, dem uh, demonstrating the, uh, that they have a what they call a, a stronghold, which is the noon division. 
uh, we will want to look at why the people who are known, why they have been voting for them. Is it because of the results and the improvement on, of, 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 of their life, their living conditions? Is that the reason why the... the no, I've had opportunities to talk to many guys from the Noon Division. You're talking about the CDU yes. of uh, late um, Adamundam Joya. That's right. Uh, the, the situation in Fumban, I've been to Fumban, the situation of the town is not good. They know very well that um, the, the, the town is not developing. But they will tell me that they prefer to vote their brother. That's all. Well, I mean, the other people, the CPDM people, are also their brother. <laughs> so, to them, <laughs> voting the CPDM is voting somebody from Yaoundé. From Yaoundé. Yeah. No, but, but, um, what, I, mm. what I'm trying to paint here mm. is, first of all, the you were talking about whether the opposition can inspire give us hope and yeah. all of that. You mm. will discover that there's an issue of contradiction and inconsistency. Mm -hmm. I was taking that day to transpose it with what okay. has been happening to... Uh, there's another division called Nyong Ekele. Mm -hmm. You know, Akele, since the advent of multipartism has always, unless my memory fails me, had a majority of the uh, opposition party. CPM has never had a majority seat. UPC. Uh, UPC. Yeah. But look at what they have been doing with their own victory also. The first victory they had. They traded you know, for ministerial positions. Beautiful. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and now, you, 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 when you look at the party assistance now, with just a small misunderstanding, they start going to ranks. Uh, that is the only party that has given us reason to have UPC, K, UPC, A, UPC, B, and all of those things using the alphabet. That is Ogbelen Ogbe who wins from there and is made minister. Beautiful. And then uh, Kodo works so hard on the field, and then when he wins, <laughs> Ogbelen is pushed out, Beautiful. and then Kodo is taken in. Yeah. The, you now see now with the advent now of another. I don't want to probably use it for me to be accused of hate language mm -hmm. when Cabral came in. Mm -hmm. Because also he is considered a son of the uh, son of the Kelly son, and yeah. all of that, they now rejected the original what they call a historical party, who's a um, uh, founder, uh, the FG and the, the cops is found there. They now rejected and they went now to PC, uh, uh, no uh, new way, and they went now to 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 Cabral and all of that. It first of all tells you that political party in this country. They are founded not on ideological foundation where they have a consistency that the average person can look up to and identify because it's an issue of not your brother or your sister it's an issue of ideology now when you look at and i love some of the titles that they have by way of names you have a party like my brother uh over there their party is talking about talk about reconciliation who is reconciling who and and we are having all the numerous crises in this country we've never had a green a, like a road map on a reconciliation based on the fact that if what is going on now especially in the north and southwest has not gone through because probably the current governing party has not been able to manage it very well what is the alternative that the, the the party of reconciliation pcrn has actually brought on the table they are proposing uh, uh communal communal federalism. what does that mean mm. anyway he, he's going to what explain. does that mean in terms of the 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 the, the, the cause of the crisis in anglophone cameroon mm. was the cause of cameroon anglophone cameroon based on what you what i, I look this is another this is another what you call hypocrisy that you see politicians using big, <laughs> big empty language to to bamboo the average <laughs> the, 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 the issue there is that the person who created that party before cabra came in is somebody from the north area mm. and boko haram has been decimating and and virtually because the, the same people that boko haram came and recruited and joined them to be to be calculating bombs on them it was because also they were also against the city because from them the history of those people there they have been using it as a what they call mutong or just as uh, voters to be used but when they, they the people come down and get the elections okay. they go away and they don't come back to them so they say okay an alternative has come yeah. but now we are saying that cameroon has all the crisis that we're talking about do we have a rope map for a party that calls itself a reconstruction party that has proven that this is an alternative to the current management system of the, the crisis that we have in Cameroon. Okay, uh, Christian Jock, you have been, um, yeah, it clear. Oui, uh, permit me to say something, firstly, to my, <laughs> my neighbor of my right. Mm. Um, even when you have the, the common front, what are the reaction of uh, the government or the population? You have two, these two entities. Quelle est la réaction des uns des autres? 
le cas, par exemple, du code électoral, où on se retrouvait à Yaoundé, quelle a été la réaction des populations Rien. On s'est réuni tout le monde pour dire, on parle de la même voix. Qu'est-ce que les autres ont fait Rien. Quand ces partis politiques sont mis en mal, le seul arbitre, c'est le peuple. C'est le peuple qui doit suivre ces gens. Et un peuple qui ne s'inscrit pas, qui ne s'intéresse pas à la politique, c'est un problème fondamental. On doit comprendre ça. À dire, on voit comment le gouvernement viole notre constitution, notamment l'article 3, quand on voit section 3, où on dit que les partis pour dire qu'on croit l'expression du suffrage. Ce n'est pas ça qui est fait. Voyez -vous? Maintenant, le peuple donc, doit être celui qui habite, notamment. Maintenant, je vais revenir sur euh, M. Moufo. Il a dit deux choses. Euh, une chose est son contraire, en fait. La première chose, il parle de la réconciliation. Oui, nous parlons de la réconciliation. Nous sommes, pas, nous sommes le parti camerounais pour la réconciliation nationale. Nous voulons réconcilier les camerounais avec leur histoire. Nous voulons réconcilier les camerounais avec eux-mêmes. Notre projet est assez clair. Je comprends que vous êtes la société civile. Euh, Peut-être la société civile euh, vous intéressez à autre chose. Vous n'intéressez pas à la chose politique. Notre programme est assez clair. Notre forme de l'État, la question anglophone, nous avons proposé une solution alternative que nous avons défendue au grand dialogue national. On a appelé ça le fédéralisme communautaire, c'est-à-dire un État qui nous ressemble, un État qui prend ses sources d'avant le 4 mars 1916, c'est-à-dire le jour où on a partitionné le Cameroun en deux, parce que nous sommes une et une même chose. Il faut un État qui ressemble à, nos identités, à notre identité, à nos réalités anthropologiques et sociales. Un État où vous et moi, on se reconnaît. Il ne s'agit pas de l'hypocrisie. Un État où vous allez mieux vous placer, mieux vous exercer. Parce que la crise anglophone, moi, je suis un Congo, je suis Sawa. Quand vous avez le, qu'on appelle l'ancien euh, euh, doyen de, du Sénat, Tif Moukete, qu'est-ce que Tif Moukete a dit au Premier ministre You and me, are we Sawa or not She has not telling that he's anglophone. Il a dit au Premier ministre, ah oui, ça va, ou non, donc ça dit qu'il se reconnaît comme étant ça va. Cette crise historique, ce problème, ce contentieux historique qui nous divise autour de la langue, une langue étrangère que certains veulent revendiquer, vraiment, il faut dépasser, c'est notre position aujourd'hui, il faut dépasser ça et régler définitivement cette question. Parce que tout ce qu'on fait aujourd'hui ne changera rien. Et donc, nous avons proposé une solution crédible, historique même, du genre, c'est-à-dire le fédéralisme communautaire qui va résoudre définitivement la question de la crise Anglophone. Maintenant, je reviens vers vous. Tout à l'heure, vous avez dit, vous, vous vous dites une chose en contraire. Vous convoquez euh, Fumban, vous convoquez l'Union équilibrée, mais vous tombez dans le même piège que les autres analystes. Vous dites que le parti a été créé euh, par les gens du Nord. Donc, le parti doit donc ressembler aux gens du Nord. Non, il faut sortir de cet ancrage dans lequel le régime veut nous euh, emballer pour dire parce que Kabaye est l'Union équilibrée, le parti doit être l'Union équilibrée. Parce que comme tu es de l'Ouest, le parti doit être de l'Ouest ou parce que euh, Fungi est du Nord-Ouest, le parti doit être le parti anglo -Bami. Il faut sortir de cette tribalisation des partis politiques. Un parti politique, aucun parti ne peut gérer, aucun parti politique ne peut gérer un pouvoir au Cameroun avec sa communauté. Personne. Il faut gérer avec tout le monde, avec toutes les entités nationales. Un parti politique se définit donc sur son implantation nationale et territoriale et de sa vision à accéder au pouvoir. Moi, je reviens sur ce que mon voisin disait tout à l'heure. Il y a une difficulté fondamentale à l'expression des libertés au Cameroun. C'est à ce niveau où c'est difficile. Et les seuls qui doivent encourager l'opposition, c'est l'opposition morte, c'est-à-dire les citoyens qui ne disent rien ou qui cautionnent euh, la the question. Si the silent majority. Oui, le mm -hmm. silence majoritaire de cette population qui ne dit rien. Je vous ai dit tout à l'heure que vous avez 25 millions de Camerounais, donc au moins 15 millions en âge de voter. On a à peine 3 millions qui vont voter. Vous avez 6 millions, c'est-à-dire, si tout le monde pouvait s'inscrire, aller voter, surveiller le vote, le lendemain, on gagne les élections. Qu'est-ce que les populations font le, il, faut, il faut saluer euh, l'opposition, je vous assure. C'est difficile. Il faut saluer les gens comme le Nijon Fundi, qui ont tenu 30 ans avec ce système violent, c'est-à-dire, on fait tout, tous les pièges. Ils sont là pour donner de leur vie, pour proposer des solutions alternatives au pays. Il faut comprendre que ce n'est pas chose facile face à ce régime essentiellement dictatorial, violent, avec ses soutiens extérieurs, dont Padi Assang aime toujours parler de, de jacobinisme et la France, que tout le monde, que vous tous vous avez cité ici sur ce plan, pour comprendre que pour renverser ce régime, ce serait, c'est-à-dire, c'est un, d'abord une masse critique électorale. Et qui dit masse critique électorale, c'est-à-dire que l'ensemble de la population en âge de voter doit s'inscrire sur liste électorale, doit, doit s'intéresser à la politique et doit comprendre que c'est la politique qui guide notre problème. Okay. Tout à l'heure, euh, mon voisin Edouard l'a dit. Si les jeunes étaient sortis en, en, en février dernier et allaient voter, on ne serait pas là. 
on aurait des jeunes qui contrôlent ces entités et on serait loin. Moi, par exemple, quand je, je suis allé candidat, euh, euh, comme vous savez que j'étais candidat au législatif oui, oui, et même au, au, euh, au régional, tout le monde disait que l'enfant là va où On l'a vendu, mais c'est sur les grands. Peut-être que vous... tu, tu ne serais pas ici. Oui, peut-être que Non, <rire> c'est toujours là. Non, pas parce que oui, tu, 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 tu vois donc que c'est cette même population qui veut une chose et son contraire. Soyez donc cohérents. Ok. <rire> Well, no. Yes, I, I think what you just said, the last thing you said, right, it is not the issue of the youth. They did not really see as though you have been sold. The major challenge they did see was that perhaps you did not give them a clear vision that would have caused them to accept that this young man is going in for this position. This is the problem. Over time, the opposition party, they, like I said earlier, they take the same modus operandi of the ruling party to oh. tell the people that they are opposition. What are you selling? What are you, are you selling? You insulting CPDM yeah. or you are giving an alternative that is it. to the current status quo? That is okay, it. Okay, 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 okay. Chaque okay. jour, on propose des alternatives. Est-ce que les gens comprennent dans un environnement, je prends le cas. Yeah. Vous allez dire à un jeune universitaire, engage-toi dans un parti politique. Il va dire, pardon, ma vie. Et en danger. C'est pour ça que vous dites que comprenez yeah, le contexte. Faites le contexte. Yeah, but I think, I think that uh, oh, one of the issues is uh, almost everybody is talking about uh, the fact that um, no party is presenting an alternative. But I think we are not also we are not also doing enough to work up to these parties for them to present their, their respective manifestos because you will not run for. The presidential election without a political man manifestation. Yes, but most of them, even to create the party, yeah, repeat, uh, yeah. one minute. Even to create the party political, one of the pieces to create a party is to have a manifest. Yeah. So, so many, 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 many communities do not take the pins to, yeah, to, to find out. Uh, but um, no, just a minute, just a minute. No. Just you take, guys, just you guys, guys are marginalizing. Uh, Andre, yes. You're creating a business. Mm. Let's just do the, syn uh, the synonym of a political party mm. as a business. Mm. Is it that look, the customers go and look for you, or you go look for those customers? Yeah, some, some even boycott uh, uh, <laughs> the consumption of a particular good. Yeah, yeah. Some, some even boycott coming to TV to sell themselves. Good. So you, you ask yourself the, the essence for the creation that is people have to run after them. Yes. Yeah, you, you, you're, you're perfectly right. Yeah, but, but firstly, uh, l'environnement doit être normal. No, but no, no. Voici l'environnement. <laughs> venez vous voir. Pourquoi vous ne venez pas? Oui, y compris les médias. Nous sommes, c'est pas toujours évident. Comme tu nous ouvres la voie, c'est pas les autres médias ailleurs, c'est pas facile. Okay. On fait même des médias parce qu'on s'exprime au Cameroun. Ça, vous le savez, moi. Okay. Uh, Andrew Atemebako, we are talking about inspiring uh, the Cameroonians. We have above 317 political parties in Cameroon today. Uh, which one do you believe in? Which one inspires hope? How do they even uh, hope to take power from their little corners? Seemingly, each village is supposed to have a party going by what we have today. Mr. Liu, what aches me is that they are, how will I put it, they are taking advantage over the Cameroonians, the population, the masses. Mm -hmm who are not very enlightened and educated. I think that that is the way I look at it. Because when you live in a society where majority of the people are not enlightened, they tend to have their hope being despaired and being derailed, where their hopes are not, are not being realized. We are talking here of a country which I would say that ever since the colonial master put the diaper on this country, the country has not been able to remove that, uh, that diaper which we are still talking today. We are talking here of party politics and we are not looking at what the people of this country really do want. You see, democracy, Mr. Liu, is not for poor persons. It's for very sounded and healthy-minded human beings. When you bring in a system like democracy in a country such as Cameroon, which 85% of its population lives in abject poverty, I think that's an abuse of democracy or that's an abuse to human rights. That is, you are taking advantage of the people's ignorance by allowing them to practice democracy. For you, you repeat one thing, over and over, this is 60 years under a democratic system, and we are still talking about democracy. I think it's madness. Chadians that we consider them to be, uh, uh, how will I put it, illiterates, they have been able to charter their own future, to say we don't want democracy, we don't want France, 
we want to decide and build our own systems. How many Cameroonians know the genealogy of democracy? How many of them understand the essence of democracy that was instituted in America? They don't have any idea. They feel that it's like a game of chance. It's like you go and play Paris food, you go and play, uh, uh, you go and gamble, and you are having a game of chance. I might win, I might not win. A president that came into power from 60 without election, 84 without election, and you are telling me that you want to go and win him in an election. Are you the one who put him there? There are things that Cameroonians need to really sit down and rethink. I'm not saying that we should go and begin to fight against the government. No, we should not fight against ourselves. Cameroonians need to sit down and try to figure out what really the problem of Cameroon is. The problem of Cameroon is that we have a nation coming from the West that feels that they have all the say in our country. They feel that they can decide who next is going to be our president? That's why we realize that almost a presidential seat now has become a lifetime appointment because somebody wants him there, not you people. Look at Chad. Even Idris Deby came on national TV, told the world that France put him under jurex to go in again for another term. This is just to tell you that we have uh, uh, dictators coming in from the West. So that's an abuse of democracy. That's an abuse of human rights. And then the Human Rights Security Council sits up there and says nothing when the rights of the Cameroonians are being abused. And these are the same people we go on calling on them to come and assist us when they are the genealogy of the very problems that we are going through. We cannot apply the same system and we expect a different result. We need, I kept saying, until Cameroonians begin to build their own things. You will never have respect for any of these uh, uh, foreign, uh, foreign countries. Every other thing we have been dependent on them. And that's a huge challenge. Mr. Leo, I discovered and in all my analysis I have made, I have come to this one solution, this one uh, conclusion. You see, as long and no matter how they consider us to be a third world nation, and how much they have abused us and exploited us. How much reserve France is keeping on the behalf of this nation, Mr. Liu. I feel that if our leaders, I understand that their hands are tied, but they must not stand alone. If you have taken that responsibility to reflect your nation and you realize that you are under due rest because the law is at stake, I think that you should take a different approach. You must not still stay in power. You can find another strategy and see how you can, you, you can uh, either you let somebody else who is able to resist and is able to charter a better future for its own countrymen. Because when you have a system like this, Mr. Liu, that how it exercises its own tyranny over those that are beneath it to support the prizes of its own enemies. That today Cameroonians are fighting Cameroonians with all other opposition parties that now become as if our problem is language. When Chinese are in Cameroon do not even speak English or French and they are doing well. How can it be a, 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 a problem of language? It's a problem of bad leadership. Other nationals come in here, one, two years, they are all smiling, shining, going back to their countries and millionaires and billionaires. Why Cameroonians are plunging into abject poverty? And this is not the case only in Cameroon. It's all over Africa. Okay. Andrew, uh, uh, thank you. Let me take a few messages. Uh, good evening. This is Maurice from Yaoundé. I don't see any hope in the opposition party in Cameroon because the opposition party is always the last hope. When uh, the ruling party fails the people, but in Cameroon forever, for over three decades, uh, these opposition parties have failed us. Uh, just imagine the last presidential elections. We could see Joshua Osi from the SDF party who ran as presidential candidate finally left after losing and started running for the seat of Fika Foot president. This is just to tell us that uh, the opposition in Cameroon don't have a sense of direction and everybody is fighting for his or her stomach. Uh, for their generations to come. Thank you, Maurice. Uh, this one says, uh, Greetings to all in the studio and thanks for this opportunity to air out our minds. I don't, re I don't really think we have opposition parties in Cameroon that can change the status quo. What we have is just uh, certain popular and fortunate individuals who make uh, use of their knowledge to maneuver 
over a set of frustrated youth to make money. If I'm wrong, can someone tell me why opposition leaders can't speak in one voice in Cameroon? All attempts to obtain a coalition of opposition parties has, has always, uh, always featured due to egocentrism. Derek Walla is writing from Chang. Good evening to you, uh, Derek. Mr. Liu, good evening. Our opposition parties cannot pull Cameroon out of the present situation. The main reason is greed. Or if the opposition can form a common front where representatives of all the parties in the union are bent on change, the ruling party will not be able to match the, their force. I give you and your family example. The CDU party of late Adamun Damjoya has never lost. Okay? Um, yeah. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I love your program so much, especially when I see Mr. Temebako on the panel. He goes straight to the point, and I learn a lot from him, though he does not have enough time to elaborate. Thanks, Zhang. Uh, is writing from Yaoundé. Good evening to you. The position does not uh, but help to confuse the citizens with their insolent uh, campaigns. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. The problem isn't the opposition nor the people. The problem is the electoral code. Whether you vote CPDM or not, they are going to win. They have the yam and the knife. Julius is also writing from uh, Yaoundé. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm enjoying your program. It's educative. Mr. Ebako is very right. All the opposition in Cameroon are greedy. Everybody wants to be president. Papa Oyuyu is writing from Douala. Good evening to you. Hello, Prime. I am writing from Kumba. My contribution concerning the way out of Cameroon with the opposition. I think opposition in Cameroon has failed to establish a systematic agenda for Cameroonian politically, economically, and security-wise. There are there is power in unity, and that is what is lacking with the many parties in Cameroon. If opposition can define a roadmap for Cameroonians without seeking power, uh, grab without a consolidation and bringing economic benefits to Cameroonians, okay? Uh, this one from Sweden, Mr. Liu, we can only trace our country, Cameroon, on paper from 1960. If the first article on our constitution, which is the federal form of our, our state, has been distorted when it was clearly stated that the form of the form will never be tempered with, then trust me, uh, that is where our problem begins. If we do not address that distortion, then we will almost never come to a lasting solution to the problems of Cameroon. Politicians and party politics uh, can't help us. My take. Okay, my brother uh, Mopao writing from Sweden there. Hello, Leo. Good evening uh, to you and panelists and all your viewers. In order to move this country forward, we need a federal structure. If we don't do this, you will not recognize this country. Post Paul Bia, a country can't be decentralized with power still in Yaoundé. Please, we love this country, but things need to change. Our problem is the form of state and management. Let us not be shy to have this conversation. Thank you. Achiri is writing from uh, Boya. Good evening to you, Achiri. Uh, good evening. All. Gembe Eric from Limbe. N news elec no elections shall remove the present regime, whether coalition or not. I can never vote. The present government is out. Uh, good evening to you. Um, this one says, uh, please tell your panelists that uh, Chadians are not illiterate. We have chosen Frank Emmanuel Bia as our choice. Mr. Ibako needs to learn more about politics. Okay, we are going to I will ask uh, Padi Asanga one last question. Many persons think that um, a solution can only come from uh, the position through a coalition. Why has it been very difficult for you guys to talk on the one umbrella? Um, Leo, I told you when we when we just started this program that um, the problem is not that uh, the opposition is not talk or they don't want to talk. Uh, the problem is that um, the opposition has been infiltrated and uh, the Jacobinist French uh, supported regime knows how to do that best. And it brings people within, it runs, that uh, it brings them and infiltrates the op what you people call the opposition. Remember, the opposition is not a political party. There are political parties with concurrent ideologies that work together, and that is what we are talking when they are talking about 1992. 
1992, not everybody voted for Frunji. Frunji was not the candidate. Uh, SDF could not make it. It was a conglomerate of people from the civil society, UPC, opposition party, who were clamoring for a federal system, trying to unite Cameroon under a federal system. That is what we are talking about. So we should be honest enough to say that you will not, you will not, you will never get it when you get um, satellite political parties created by the CPDM who sit around and tell you that they want a regional federalism based on what? Because we have two uh, post-colonial identity. If we want to talk about cultural federalism, that that, that one is acceptable. But when you talk about uh, regional federalism, who created the regions? The regions are per decree. So. There are many factors that are coming in, in this situation. We have to consider the fact that, because, you see, I am I have a political casket, and I'm not here to talk for my political casket, but that massacre that, was, uh, that happened in uh, Yaoundé, where people went and sat and said they were talking about electoral code. No, the premise for a, a better electoral code has to do with the reform of the Constitution. That one I have to tell you, because... The voters' age has to be looked into, the statue of Elecam, and then two-round elections. Those things cannot be determined by Elecam because the Elecam laws are depend on the, the constitutions. So those are the things that we should look into. And that's why I tell you that people have infiltrated opposition. And when we are called, wherever we are called, we are asked to come and sit. We come and sit and listen to the people, and we, we put our results. And this is what I'm trying to tell you. But I want to confess to you today that Cameroonians, in their vast majority, it is not that regional federation per decree that people are saying that Mr. Bia sits there and can dissolve the regional council when he likes. It doesn't work like that. Federation has to go back to the spirit of our coming together and then be regionalized so much so that. It cannot be touched, you. And there are political parties who can incarnate that, and if they come together and then fusion themselves, articulate that well to the people, the people will come out and they will stand for that idea. It has happened before. We should not pretend to be inventing the wheel. We did not invent democracy. It was imposed on us. And Cameroon has that peculiarity that it has to post-colonial identity. And the only other country that has such an identity is Canada and it is very prosperous. So we should capitalize on that and stop deceiving Cameroonians, telling people that uh, it should be this, it should be that. No, we can have a cultural federation. That one is possible. Or a post-colonial political federation. Those are the two alternatives. The third one would be a, 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 um, some kind of... Um, um, geo-ecological or economic federation where we put the, 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 the Cameroon in regions, where what they produce. The littoral region is rich in fishery and urbanry. The northern region is rich in textile. The savannah region is rich in that. And then the east region is rich in wood and so on. Those are the things that but when people come and tell you that they want some kind of a regional federation based on the decrees that were promulgated by Mr. Bita. They just want to create the same system and keep our people in servitude okay. for the interests of France okay. and Macron, Chipon, Moriti, and all those people. We have to cut the umbilical cord with them. We did it one time and we did not succeed because we did not want to pick, we did not want to pick arms to work on people's companies. And we are mature enough, and we okay, have learned party, from other countries. Okay, Paddy, Paddy, do it with arms. Okay, Paddy, Paddy, Asanga. Thank okay, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Paddy. We are moving straight to our second topic, which has to do with uh, the elite anglophone elite. Um, whether there is uh, a possibility for them to redeem themselves. Um, I'll start with you, uh, George, uh, Mr. Mofo. When we talk of um, anglophone elites. Uh, uh, can they redeem themselves? Can Anglophone uh, elites redeem themselves from fallen uh, glory? Um, the first question that comes to mind is, who is uh, an Anglophone elite? That's great. Um, you know, that was, honestly, that is the topic that attracted me to 
okay, to come here this evening. Mm. And uh, and I will shock some people outside there to tell the population outside there that uh, this thing they call anglophone crisis has exposed a lot of what you might call uh, things which are considered banal or mystery to actually uh, let some people who uh, see themselves as superior because elitism is about cutting yourself away from the masses and uh, demonstrating some ability, some, 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 some superior. You know, you know, I don't know what you make of, of uh, when you hear of a uh, political um, uh, documents like constitution, decree, instructions, and uh, and uh, you you discover that um, the question now is the people were uh, first of all acting like interface mm -hmm. between the government and the masses especially from northwest and southwest ask yourself after this crisis can they still with authority still say the same thing that they were saying before this crisis and the point now which i agree with you where you're asking can they redeem themselves from foreign glory that glory that they had then where did it come from mm. how real how genuine was it good mm. because um and this is this topic is related to the first topic because you find mm -hmm. people who were not generational they were not thinking about the next generation they were thinking only about the next elections so to them they were just short-sighted anything that used to happen there and elites were only useful when it comes around to give uh, bags of rice and salt and uh, soap only during election time so their own elitism was not sustained and the moment the decree comes out and you are no more an elite. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Relevance becomes different. And you know, again, Yaoundé is doing it in such a way whereby they come from the same village or the same town and the same whatever. They take, they replace you with another brother with yeah. whom you are not even agreeing remove, while you were up there. Remove, uh, Ngole Ngole and replace him with uh, Ngole. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so it makes it makes it so ridiculous that you see today you are an elite, tomorrow you are a he goat. Mm. Because nobody even, and it becomes so, 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 so terrible that you, you, you see when they are talking after they are no more there. Mm -hmm. They attack a lot. They, they are calling for a lot of sympathy. They are the greatest critic when it comes to the action of the person who has replaced them. They start telling you when I was there. You know, in Boya, they used to call some people I was mm -hmm. because they believe in some past history that they don't have anything to show. And now, this anglophone crisis where power now has gone to the, what I call now, the, the highway. Where you find now that uh, rat-tack young people with uh, guns ask you to sit down, uh, stand up, jump, and you ask, how should I, should I jump? It tells you that there was no consistency in leadership. They were not demonstrating any form of sustenance in the elitism that they had. And now, they say in Pigeon, uh, 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 we don't make for uh, we don't make you know, the sex of the, of of, of what a man or a woman foul. Mm -hmm. No, we are saying, or uh, personally, I think that we need, and I don't know why this uh, our reverend person died without actually having this conference to come again, because that would have been what people promised during the first anglophone all anglophone coming in 1993, and if Kadinatumi's own had held. You would have seen how people would have rejected because some people who came and said so many good things in 1993 when they saw how they changed and became something else that led now to this what they call now the anglophone crisis where young people went to, because they gave a lot of hope to a lot of people but after that they disappeared and so we are saying that this anglophone crisis has come now to demonstrate that we don't have what we might consider now a unique leadership from the northwest and southwest that can speak on behalf of every other person mm. and we are hoping that after now a generation will emerge and i believe that generation is going to be from somebody who was born after what they call uh, 1960 whether we are complaining whether we had uh, independence or, or okay. ratification yes um is is this the time to prove uh and to know who an elite is uh, from the southwest and northwest region yeah, uh, Mr. Leo, it is indeed the time to prove. But what is quite sad is the fact that most of these elites uh, who had it very much in the past 
of course they were superior they were superior in several things economically intellectually they lived they had a certain status which at the end of the day it gave the people the reason to or some reasons to see them as as demigods you know these elites they acted as intermediaries between the people and the government and they enjoyed a lot of privileges i i i did say they enjoyed because i am not actually looking at the the privileges they had before prior to the limelight of the anglophone crisis and uh, during this period of the anglophone crisis i want to personally believe that uh, the elites are going to have it pretty hard uh, after this anglophone crisis now you know prior to the 50th anniversary which was celebrated in boya we it, it, it was already an eye opener that most of these elites have not been working for the people I remember passing through a certain road where uh, some of the elites were in control and and I, I, I stopped for a while. I had to look at what what nature of the tar they were putting on the road because some roads were actually being constructed in Boya. Then I noticed that um, where this uh, work was ongoing, a lot was being done which was not right. But you know, for the fact that the, 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 the elite was given the opportunity to manage certain projects, the people could not speak because uh, they have been feeding from the normal bag of rice and a few things that they always bring to give them, especially when they are going back to their villages. So it gave them a lot of hope that um, these persons will always be there for us. And you know, at one point in time too, the elite had the people, it's like they had tied them on a certain rope and this cord was tied to a tree. And what was, what was this? You know, whenever you go back to the village or you come back to your local division, this parent will come to your house telling you, my child needs to go to a nam, this one needs to go to this place, and so on. So they saw themselves as, as the big God. But with, with the Anglophone crisis coming to the limelight and the only regime, was able to see that the elites have not been managing the people quite well because if the elite were indeed managing the people quite well, we would have seen that the people would have listened to the elite because we had a certain class of persons that were sent to the Norway and South who were exclusively from these regions, but still did not quell the crisis. Let me just borrow into what happened in Fumbot, uh, I think a few days ago, where the governor went to the field, the governor came down, the, the, the military was actually taken from, from Kutaba, and the people of that area still were not afraid until when the sultan had to come out, then they listened to the sultan. Now, this, this is, this, the, that already is a signal that this is somebody who truly represents us, not these people you have sent to, to, to come and talk to us. So the elites have not, first of all, been able to, to speak to these people to their hearing. And with a lot of lies they have told Yaoundé, they got this crisis to the worst state ever. We, we saw the case of, 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 of the Minister of Territory Administration who came out openly and said there was no such problem. We equally had other situations where the, 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 the people who come down to the fee and the report they are giving is not actually what reflects uh, the, the ground. Now, because of this wrong data that they have collected and piled in Yaoundé, this is the, 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 the setback of this, of this data because they never okay. collected the people's mind. They collected their own mind for their own gain. So they cannot even redeem themselves. Yeah, when, want, yes. uh, just to kill you, when yes. you say the information that they fed Yaoundé with uh, was yeah. not appropriate, yeah. is it to say that uh, those in Yaoundé are not aware of what is happening in uh, the divisions, in uh, the subdivisions, in the regions when we know that we have uh, representatives, we have divisional officers, yeah. we have all the regional and uh, regional, divisional and subdivisional delegates, are they not taking this well, the same this We yes. know that uh, there is uh, the secret police. Yeah. What information is uh, not all of these people are on the ground but we have noticed that now take for example when we see the elites they'll gather a few people and tell them that they are sending motions of support to the president mm -hmm. now what is this for this is to tell the president that the people of this area they are so much in support of you and they are behind you but with all of these services you enlisted the police the the divisional officers and the rest we have seen that most of these elites have succeeded to to to, to bring them under their feet because Corruption, which is first of all on its uh, on its peak right now in Cameroon, is able to 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 make most of these people not to give the report. Now the the Yaoundé regime does not depend on these people exclusively 
on reports that comes from the ground. The elite are kept. They believe that these are the people that will cause these people on the ground to, to elect them. Don't forget, the purpose of the elite is to see that whenever the government wants vote, whenever the government has an agenda to carry out, this person should act as intermediaries to these people. Now, the elites are first of all benefited from so much. Economically, they have been benefiting. Now, I mean, I mean, intellectually, they have been benefiting. But if you go back to look at most of these areas, you, 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 you may want to feel that, well, it's like the elites were kind of jumping into their homes. Let us take the case of, 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 of Bangem. Let me just go into Kube Maningoba. We have seen how there are no roads in, 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 in Bangem, which is the mm -hmm. capital. Mm -hmm. we, during the last election, we saw people were climbing on sticks, falling sticks, mm -hmm. to go and cause, tell a people to, to vote okay. for them. Okay. Uh, we. The, you, I don't know whether you understand what we are really on, they are talking about the elites of the southwest and northwest region. Um, do you think they, they have proven their work? Have they been exposed by what is happening in the southwest and northwest region? Uh, en fait, je voudrais dire que il s'agit pas seulement des élites de, de ces deux régions. Mm. Il s'agit des élites de toutes les régions du Cameroun. Okay. Toute l'élite a échoué au Cameroun. C'est ce qu'il faut dire dans tout le jeu. L'élite a échoué au Cameroun. Charles Tebe Yena a écrit un livre, euh, le, Les paradoxes du pays organisateur. Élite oui. prédatrice ou alors élite militaire. Il vous demande que le sud est la région la, qui est la plus enclavée du Cameroun. Allez-y voir. Pour, quand vous parlez du sud, c'est vraiment vous parlez de l'est alors, qui est la région la plus riche du Cameroun, mais la plus enclavée du Cameroun. C'est pour comprendre effectivement que les élites ont échoué. Maintenant, pour revenir spécifiquement à, aux deux régions que vous avez citées, les régions du Nord-Ouest et du Sud-Ouest, non. La crise anglophone a comme deuxième conséquence l'échec de l'élite. Effectivement, c'est une élite essentiellement oligarque. C'est-à-dire, cette élite s'est positionnée dans sa logarchie, n'a pas partagé, effectivement. Qu'est-ce que les populations réclament Les populations réclament une certaine autonomie de gestion. Et on voit l'élite qui est là, et compartiment, et défile à Yaoundé, qui ne donne qu'à sa famille, qui ne donne qu'à son petit entourage, mais qui refuse effectivement de faire le travail pour lequel ils ont été certainement promus, soutenus là. Et euh, l'autre conséquence, c'est qu'on voit l'élite est en train de promouvoir leurs enfants, c'est-à-dire les enfants des enfants. Allez voir les enfants de Tangandi, ils sont où Allez voir les enfants de jeunes euh, ils sont où ainsi de suite. Qu'est-ce qu'ils font des autres, les enfants des autres En réalité, n'attendez rien ou n'attendons plus rien de ces élites. Il en est du nord-ouest, du sud-ouest, comme il en est du littoral. Le littoral est à côté du sud-ouest seulement. Qu'est-ce que l'élite a fait pour le littoral On parle du cas d'une CAM. Prenez le CAM par exemple, le département d'une CAM, qui a le plus d'élites après le dialogue pour la région du, du président de la République dans le gouvernement. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a il n'y a, si, a pas de route, il n'y a rien, il n'y a aucun, il dit bien, il n'y a même pas une maison à deux étages, une maison à étage à Yabasi, à part un hôtel, marché, rien, je vous assure. Le seul monument qui est à Yabasi, c'est l'école agricole, le lycée agricole qu'on a, que les Chinois ont conçu dernièrement. C'est dommage, c'est pour donc vous dire effectivement que ces élites ne pensent qu'à leur vente, ces élites ne pensent pas aux autres, ça dit c'est de l'individualisme, ils sont méchants. C'est ça le thème. Ils ne okay. veulent pas que les autres puissent évoluer. Okay. Donc, euh, il la preuve. Vous avez même vu que c'est cette élite qui a contribué à exaspérer la crise anglophone. Mm -hmm. Prenez le cas de, du procès de Rotinjema à l'université. Euh, prenez le cas de Nalva Yonga à, euh, à, à l'université de Bouya. Prenez le cas de Tangandi. Pas Djema, il veut dire Nalva Yonga là-bas. Prenez le cas de Tangandi. Prenez le cas des autres. Qu'est-ce qu'ils font Quel est leur comportement Effectivement, cette élite ne pense pas pour les autres, ne pense pas pour la communauté, ne pense pas pour la collectivité. Mmh. Okay. C'est-à-dire qu'il faut changer cette élite, il faut les balayer. Okay. Um, Zoga Nzoga, writing from Kong Samba, says some, some anglophone elites are self-centered and uh, not good. Uh, all those uh, who call themselves elites have been vomited by the population and will never redeem themselves. Even after the crisis, Nebadri is writing from Bomenda. Do you, have, uh, do you share um, this opinion? But they have been vomited. Mr. Liu, you, I, I look at it differently. Okay. In the, in the point that you see the elites have a whole different role with the administrators. And one of the things that the Cameroonians have been deceived and have been brainwashed is this Western system of governance, whereby it's almost like washing away the people's cultures, the people's values, the people's identity. You know, in a society where we have always grown up, 
elites are supposed to be held of high esteem than government administrators. That's why when he cited the case of the Sultan, the people could listen to him because that was a man who has kept his integrity. He was a man who did not merge himself into politics. No, he's a senator. Eh? Um, uh, yes, I know. Hmm. To a certain extent, hmm. you need to be able to reflect your people, whereby the people understand that you maintain one spirit with them. But by the time you abandon what has been entrusted in your hands, that becomes a challenge. The people start seeing you as an enemy. And that's why you realize that the elites became a major target because they turned their back away from the very people that held them high esteem and, I mean, became, how will I put it, uh, instruments in the hands of a system which they felt that they got a problem with. So the, the, the way I look at it, it, it will be very, very, very difficult because we have absolutely allowed politics to, in, uh, 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 how will I put it, to engulf every sector where we really do not need politics, we need the dignity, we need integrity, we need honor, and we need respect. But we have merged politics and the interest of the people is not, is not again at heart in the hands of these elites because when this crisis began, a lot of the people in those two regions really looked up to those that they were, they were really depending on and they didn't get the kind of support which they were expecting from them because you see one of the things that Cameroonians they have to understand is that this country is extremely rich beyond the imagination of any Cameroonian and the position of the government the government has capacity to buy the consciences of 85% of Cameroonians. That's why you see, you, you have people who can oppose the government and in less than no time they become quiet. The government can give everybody three, three million in terms of election and everybody sits quiet. There are people, if they see one million francs, which they have never even seen 100,000 in their life, you tell me that they are going, they will not take it. They will take it happily and say, give you whatever you want because you have kept the people for a very long period under a particular condition. And this is done intentionally, like I keep repeating. So that is why I was saying that this system, Mr. Leo, we are talking here today, is a system that has absolutely, we are seeing before our eyes, Cameroonians are losing their values, their cultures, their tradition. I mean, their beliefs because of this Western system which is entering. And until we begin to understand the intentions of this Western nation that is bringing all of this into Africa and having our, our, our leaders having to work in support of their agendas in Africa, when that should not be at the expense of the population. Because at the end of the day, it's the common people that are paying. It's the common people that are paying. We talk here of the elites who are uh, probably maybe depending on to resolve the problem, rather the problem are only increasing. The, 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 the starvation, the, the, the difficulties, the, the IDP, the internally displaced person as I'll put, and the poverty rate is only increasing with all the actors, organizations put in place to cap down and to mitigate the situation. The question here is, what really is the problem? The problem here is not all these institutions, it's not all these actors. The problem is simple. Have a good political will for your people, point blank. The, 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 the quarrel and the plights of the people of those two regions is very simple. Give them their basic rights so that they can find their future in their own country. But people are living in their own countries like foreigners. People don't see themselves in their own country. They don't have hope in their own country whereby you have administrators that are mismanaging the resources of the nation mm. and keeping the mass population. That is why we will, I, I have always said this, as long as Africans or Cameroonians do not understand that leadership should be able to build legacy that outlived our president in such a way that it can guarantee a future for the coming generations in their nation. Okay. And this is what our leadership has not been able to create. Mm. Our own leadership, Mr. Leo, depends on one man. How do we live in a country of 26 million uh, 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 persons and one man controls the destiny of these 26 million people? He's the president. It's on head. He's the president. That is what I'm saying, that we should grow past this okay. level. Uh, we should be able to create systems, Mr. Mm. Leo, that can guarantee Cameroonians a future in their own country. Okay. This is very important. You are talking about strong institutions and not uh, strong persons. Uh, Padi Atsanga, 
uh you are not in the country but you follow very closely almost everything that is happening out here do you uh, think that uh in the next uh in the coming years we are going to witness the emergence of a new class of uh, elites in these two uh, regions um leo i uh, i'm very sorry that i'm going to disappoint all of you who are sitting in that panel because i don't believe in what you people call elites okay and uh, to talk about elites you have to put in context and define what you mean by elites. Uh, in Cameroon, we have uh, 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 intellectuals who terrorize the way of thinking of our people because they want to be get up, they want to be appointed and be called elites. And then we have leaders. And I believe in leadership. I don't believe in elites. What you people call elites, they are fabricated individuals who come and sing songs that they were told to sing, like parrots. Oh, uh, sur en, haute instruction, the chef d'état <laughs> is, uh, Atanganji is an elite. What is the meaning of an elite and how has he impacted the life of a person as an elite? It's Musonge, who told you that Northwesterners are come, no go, and elite. It's Oben Ta'ashu, the creator Come no go in the southwest region and elite. I believe in leadership. I don't believe in elite. This problem of elitism, it is a stratified society created by the Jacobini system and they inherited it from France. You have the first class, the second class, the middle class, then you have the, the, the few guys who are there to do the dirty job. That's what you people call elites. So they are there to, to, to deceive the people and then go and sit in in the upper class and decide on your future. What do you mean by elite, uh, Mr. Leo? Please answer me that question. My dear Sangha, I am the moderator here, please. You say you are the moderator. Yes. Let, let me make it clear. Yes, just today. make a point. That the concept... <laughs> The concept of elitism is an adopted concept from Jacobinism, from the French uh, monarchical system that we are still having in Cameroon. That's why you still hear people agitate. What are you? What? Paddy uh, uh, become Mr. Bia Soxin because he has that blood of an elite. Paddy Asanga, are you saying that uh, the concept of elites uh, should be removed from our Cameroonian community? Uh, it doesn't squarely uh, fix in our context. Tell me what you mean by edit. That 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 is that is pure stratifying the society and neglecting competence. It is an advocacy for mediocrity. When you sit and wine and die with Mr. Bia, you become an elite. You go back and say, I, I spoke with the president. The president told me to come and tell you that. What is all that? <laughs> Are we in a monarchy? Um, uh, uh, no, let's, let's, let's Padi, go back Padi, to Padi, 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 Padi Asanga, Padi Asanga, we are all please. learned, please. We are all learned. I'm sure the word elite uh, exists in every dictionary. We all can look it up, please. Uh, you you may not be satisfied with what is being done or the way and manner of uh, becoming an elite in Cameroon. You cannot say that um, it, they don't exist. You may want to say that um, those who are called elites in Cameroon do not actually meet the criteria for an elite. Uh, 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 um, Leo, in yes. the word elite, there is the word light. Tell me how uh, does Atanganji, Golengole Elvis, Musonge, um, Young Philemon, how have they how have they enlightened the youth? You are the one. That you are, are you, picking you, ones to the, you are the ones. To you are them. the. Okay, uh, uh, Padia Sanga, you are the one calling those names. We did not call any name here. We just talked about elite. Nobody, we did not say that um, so so and so person is cannot, the elite of. Cannot, no, no, <laughs> you no, are no, the, no, let's be honest. You guys, you are the journalists, you people that are so. You know, <laughs> if you want to talk about elite, then call the names of those people who you think that elite. Tell okay. me who's an elite, and I'll tell you if he's if it's an elite or not. Let's be honest. Please. <laughs> okay, Padi, I'm coming back to you. Yes, a party is raising an issue where many people now question 
uh, it's difficult to actually ascertain who an elite is from our communities, judging by, uh, I don't know whether it's character or output or how helpful they have been uh, uh, for their respective communities. Let it, okay. It's a sociological, like he said, which I agree with him, mm. it's actually a sociological definition of a class of people with exceptional qualities mm. and ability. Mm. Now, it must, the, 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 the deform that we have here is because we are seeing it only from a political prism. Okay. We are not seeing it from the economic, because an industrialist, somebody who has been able to create uh, 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 factories to hire people in his community, mm. that's an elite. Somebody has been able to do an exceptional action. Mm. Eto is an elite in, in, in his community, mm. in a football uh, arena, because people are, are looking up to him. But uh, I want to say, you see again, when you look at, we take concepts and then we, 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 we deform it in Cameroon. Mm. You know, we used to have what we call um, uh, Southwest Airlines Association. Mm. But it was used now for political, more of political um, uh, grandstanding, that is for, for political selling, than for internal development. Because again, as an airline, you take from outside and develop from within. But you find a situation whereby the, 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 the elites, since they were having proximity to political um, uh, power and the rest, they were rather taken from within and transmitting wrongly to where they source. Because, Leo, one of the things that will make error, and people that don't want to come out clearly, the, the resources of this country based on our governance system is centralized. And the head of state who is in charge now calls a few groups of people whom the community is like saying that these are our spokesperson. Look at the story that came out when um, uh, Achille Achu died. How did he become a, a prime minister? It was through a recommendation from Fonangwafo. Look at uh, even Mosongera we're talking about. Go and find out how he became a prime minister. As a general manager, probably Pobe did not know him. It was thanks to a recommendation from the, the late um, 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 uh, Paramount ruler of Boya. I know that. It means that somebody should be able to, because you asked a question here when the discussion was going on, that how do this, uh, uh, these people who sell wrong data to the presidency, does the presidency not have representation? That, that is different. There is political positioning in terms of resource allocation. And those resources can only be allocated based on the, the, the needs that somebody is claiming that these are the needs of my people. But now the problem comes now that when you go there now and you are supposed to be talking on behalf of those people, you shy away. It's the same thing when it comes from allocation and appropriation for our budget allocation. Do you, when you see those people going to the finance committee, they are negotiating or talking about our budget. That is not the point now that you come and change the budget. You try to change the budget allocation from the Ministry of Planning and Regional Development where the needs of your community is, is, is bargained. Yes, those elites are supposed to go now to the middle now and say these are our our our, our basic need through the representation. A lot of lobbying, especially uh, before the planning of of course the before, the, before the budget session. session. Yeah. Mm. That's at the level of conception. That's where you allocate and you present the interest of your community mm. based on the needs that they have actually because you are on the, you are interfacing, mm. you are intermediating. Mm. So before you go there now and then you are shy because probably I had I sat through a discussion where someone was actually telling me now with the with the with the death of uh, of uh, of some of these elites, I will call them political elites. They are already looking about the presentation now. Among they themselves again, they are not trying to first of all see now whether how they, they readjust and correct the, the shortcomings of what actually happened. They are see now who is going to take over from one person that natural um, phenomena has taken off from the map. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'll begin with the situation of uh, I think how even uh, George when he came to be and came, came uh, how it it started for him to become a reporter in the presidency. Now, based on the way he puts the story, it would tell you that somebody was on the ground at the time the president was coming, and he talks about the route that was actually given to Boya. He said the route from my 17, I think the route in Boya, where they had to tell, um, I think, 17 kilometers of route. Boya does not have that number of kilometers, but based on what he said, 
it was actually done. The president promised that, okay, as he is going, then they are going to Taboya. That's how Boya got to have these roads we are talking about. Now, this also comes to tell you that the elites, they have a lot to play as the Yaoundé regime have put it. So if we are not having what the regions are supposed to have or the divisions are supposed to have, the blame goes back to the elite because they are not actually performing. But now, according to Kwadi Asanga, it is a problem to him because the elites are not, we are not supposed to have elite. Every society has its own way which they would love to operate. Even in Germany, we have persons who are elite of certain areas in Germany. Now, if you want to go to even in a, in, in, in a monarch, there are certain persons who are considered as elite. Now, like we said, the elite the, the, in Cameroon, what is actually killing us in Cameroon is that the political elite determines whatsoever should happen on the ground. Now, if we had people who could come out as, as elite, and advocate on certain things, let me say in the economic sector, they will handle that. But since the policy that would have been made for this economic sector to boom within this area relies so much on what the elite will say, this is where the failure is coming from. Now, these, these are persons who have, the, the, the various communities had believed so much in them in time past. And if they are no more believing in them, it's because it has been proven. We, we, we will say it is sadly for us to have this senseless war, but it is equally good because it has come to unveil lots of things which the populace did not even know. Some people had believed. We saw a case in Kumba where some of the elite said the people of Kumba have decided that this is the form of government they will want. But if you went back to do your sampling, you will know that this person did not even go in for that. Where I am living. I go out daily as a civil society organiza organization to speak to the people to know what their minds are and what they would have loved. But if you listen to what most of these persons in quote who are considered local elites, because we have we have the national elite, we have the local elite, we have people that will give reports to perhaps the 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 the, 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 the party chairman or the party representative within the regions. We have persons that will give reports to the the the, the, the senators or the or the or uh, the member of parliament within that particular area. So. So most of these people, the reports they always give does not reflect what is on the ground. But now, what does Yaoundé need to do in order to have this? This is where we call on the president. We call on the presidency to, to, to stop that system where they depend so much on the elite. Now, the populists have come out. This could be an opportunity for the government to take this and work very much on it and understand that if you want to rely on the elite alone, then remember that you are taking your nation into. Because where we are today is based on the fact that some people who are considered to be elite of the Anglophones are rightly denied that there is no such problem. And so these people became so angry because even their own, they, they tend to, to say to themselves, but we will elect the president after what he will appoint you because those elites indirectly are put in that place by the people through the election they will do from the overall election that will take place. The president and others will come in now to select certain people. So the populist, the common person, mm. truly is the person who decides on okay. who to be their elite. Mm. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo. True elites should emerge from the masses and as a result of their actions. And so uh, the appointed elites we have now shall never redeem themselves uh, after the crisis. Um, ban Nkwene is writing from Bermenda. Greetings to all uh, in the studio. Anglophone elites cannot redeem themselves from fallen glory because the leaders themselves need to redeem their own fallen glory because they are not united and they cannot redeem us. Why? They are not uh, together. Prophet Gifts writing from uh, Yaoundé. Uh, good evening to you, Prophet Gifts. Uh, good evening, Mr. Kum and panelists. I agree with uh, Mr. Padia Sanga in the United States. I have scarcely heard the term elite. Let someone tell some of us uh, the definition of an elite. Does it mean someone working for government, most likely in Yaoundé? Thanks. Papita is writing from uh, Limbe. Good evening to you. Stephen Mwambo says, before the Anglophone, crisis, the people of Manu, Meme, and Tiko subdivision had more SCNC activists. We all know that the president war started, the present war started in Manu, I think in uh, Badi and uh, Kembong. When Agbotabi, when Agbotabi was alive, it is often alleged he always sensed uh, rebellion in Manu and will nip it in the bird. If he was alive, he may have arrested this uh, problem before it escalated. What I'm saying is that uh, the political elites are almost all parasites sucking uh, people dry. They don't represent us. They can tear us and themselves up for financial 
and political gains. Okay, Stephen Mwambu is writing from uh, oh yeah, there. Good evening to you. This funny politics of rekindling old men in the name of elite is what has helped to set confusion in the northwest and southwest regions. Gray hair was a symbol of wisdom in the days of old, but unfortunately today, gray hair is a symbol of slavery. Derek Wala uh, writing there. Um, someone is saying here that uh, real elites should emerge uh, from the masses. That is, the population is supposed to decide, or people through their actions distinguish this, themselves. That is what an elite is. It's a problem not because our elites are made from your own. That is for you to be considered an elite, you need to be appointed. And then from nowhere, you're an elite. No, effectivement, uh, uh, Leo. Uh, il faut noter qu'il y a plusieurs types d'élites. Oui, oui, je mais, mais le contexte quand on est, quand on parle d'élite, c'est l'élite. Effectivement. Politique. Non, pas tout ailleurs. Je voulais le rassurer, pas dit. Okay. Pour lui dire que c'est une définition en sciences politiques et notamment en des organisations. Il y a ce qu'on appelle la sociologie des élites. Mm. C'est toute une discipline. Voilà. Et maintenant, ce qui ont défini la notion d'élite, c'est Gaetano Mosca et Wilfried de Pareto, qui ne sont pas des Français vraiment, qui sont sud-américains. Italiens. Ouais, italien et sud-américain. Donc, vraiment, euh, il faut dépasser un peu cette conception. Et, et l'élite politique détermine toujours le cadrage de l'exercice de des autres élites. Voyez-vous Parce que c'est eux qui sont aux commandes. C'est à partir d'eux qu'on attend, effectivement, qu'il y ait une certaine implémentation. Le problème qui se pose, c'est la coupure qui existe entre l'élite et la base. D'où certaines populations ne se reconnaissent pas en l'élite actuelle. C'est ça le problème. Parce qu'on a comme l'impression, pas comme l'impression, l'élite actuelle est essentiellement prédatrice. L'élite actuelle mange, l'élite actuelle bloque tout. D'où donc euh, la nécessité de euh, la décentralisation de, vers les populations. Ce qu'on a appelé le fédéralisme pour, pour, pour rassurer euh, Paddy. Quand on parle du fédéralisme communautaire, c'est un fédéralisme culturel, effectivement. C'est un fédéralisme qui repose sur quoi Qui repose sur ramener les populations le pouvoir aux populations locales, mais un pouvoir qui les ressemble, un pouvoir qui tient lieu des réalités locales, qui t'a fabriqué donc des élites, des personnes, des représentants à partir desquels on se reconnaîtrait, justement, au, au travers des actes que ceci pose. Parce que le problème n'est pas celui du décret qu'on nomme l'élite, ça, ça n'existe partout. Le problème, c'est qu'est-ce que l'élite en fait de ce décret dont on a effectivement nommé, parce que c'est l'impact de ce décret qu'on attend. C'est-à-dire, une fois que vous êtes donc élite politique, élite de, euh, par décret, qu'est-ce que vous en faites C'est la, la, la problématique fondamentale. Que cela comprenne aussi qu'il euh, s'agit du bien public. Il s'agit ici de l'intérêt euh, public et non de l'intérêt individuel. Parce que l'autre chose qu'on constate, c'est que cette élite, elle est plus intéressée à perpétuer le régime en faisant quoi en, Non pas en faisant circuler la circulation de l'élite totale comme ça doit être fait, mais en faisant reproduire leurs enfants. Oui. C'est une bagarre vers laquelle on va arriver. Allez-y dans tous les ministères, tous les directeurs, bien les sociétés, vous allez voir les enfants de deux, de, de, qu'on a renommés partout. Vous allez voir. Et ça, ça fait peur. Et ça, c'est quoi C'est la conséquence, n'est-ce pas, de la mauvaise gouvernance, de la mal gestion de ce régime de M. Biya qu'il faut changer totalement. Okay. C'est un régime qu'il ne faut même pas accorder une prochaine faveur. Il faut en arrêter. Il okay. comprendre que c'est ça qui est la cause de l'échec de l'élite. Good evening, Mr. Liu. There is no need for opposition in Cameroon since they cannot coalesce uh, to us as a ruling party. My sincere greetings to uh, Ibako. Charles is writing from uh, from uh, Yaoundé. This one says the problem is strong uh, people and uh, very weak institutions without no independent control. The solution is for young people to build a strong economic bloc who will uh, have uh, the power to influence policy. It's, however, pathetic that the young people are moving in the same direction as their fathers. Let's look at our public administration. It's nothing to write home about. J.N. Agbo uh, writing uh, there. Uh, this one reads, uh, Mr. Liu, uh, good evening to you all in the studio. We cannot hide anglophone elites are doing nothing to remedy this situation. We expect them to find solutions peacefully to help us overcome these challenges. Yes, uh, they stay quiet and uh, Even if they want to say something, it doesn't gear up to anything. Uh, these elites have not uh, for once thought about uh, their people in the bushes. Amabo Fred writing from Boya. Uh, good evening to Mr. Liu. The Anglophone elites are the greatest problem in the Anglophone society. A bunch of liars are... Okay. 
Angola Henna is writing from Limbe. Daisy writing from Kumbase. Good evening, Mr. Liu and all the panelists. The Anglophone elites are out for their stomachs, so uh, people no longer care whether they exist or not. Uh, Daisy, good evening to you. Um, uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Uh, Jasper from Kumba. All the elites are political parasites. Quote me anywhere. Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, good evening. What I cannot understand is when pastors are also looking but for someone who has money and is not a born again, but I welcome and the guy who does not really have money but fear God comes seeking for the child. Good evening. All on the phone, elites are hand clappers in Yaoundé. Good evening. Good program. Uh, Jevin writing there. Good evening. Uh, to you people in the studio, we don't have real elites. We have uh, slaves. Okay. Um, now, Adwin Atemi Bako, uh, what do we expect to see? How do we turn things around so that we have uh, elites that the, the population can say we are glad in them? Mr. Liu, I would want to say something in reference to your answer concerning uh, Padia Sangha. Okay. You, you see, I understand his point of view and I understand where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. You see, they are those one of the Cameroonians who still hold the ideology that the uh, uh, federation should have been the solution to the, the, the problem of this, uh, of this nation. I think that he has not really been properly schooled in that uh, philosophy, thinking that the federation is going to resolve the problems we are having, whether in the two regions or in Cameroon. And then secondly, we have to understand that politics must not be discussed under political parties. Thirdly, Cameroonians must understand that a president must not only come from another political party. When we continue to go follow all the democratic methods, they don't work. If we don't get to that place where we get past that, that I don't know how I can put it, that brainwash where we feel that it is only behind a political party we can have hope in Cameroon. I think that we have just lost it all that we can run down this road for 200 years and will never succeed. Now, there's something else I want to also add here, Mr. Liu. When we talk about elites, there are three different contexts in which you can define an elite. One is superior, one has special abilities, and one has qualities. So we need to be able to define which context of elites that we are referring to. Because there are some elites that we may not, we, we are not, our analysis may not be very balanced, and I think that it can be an abuse to them. Because it's how a society decides to choose the kind of people that, uh, uh, how will I put it, that uh, uh, reflects, the, uh, uh, how will I put it, the people as elites in those, uh, uh, in those regions. People like Atanganji, you cannot say they are elites of the Southwest, they are elites of the government, not elites of the Southwest, because the people of Southwest themselves, I mean, did not, I, I have not endorsed, I mean, sp uh, power or kind of special responsibility on Atanganji. It was a government appointment that has Atanganji where he is. So it's not an elite of the people of the Southwest. So when uh, uh, um, uh, Padi Asanga wants to call those actors in the political realm as elites, these are not the elites we are referring to. We are talking of the elites of those two regions whereby the people themselves hold high esteem. How many people in Northwest and Southwest have esteem of Atanganji? It's a government. So these are not the kind of elites that we are talking about. So I want Apang, um, uh, Padi Asanga to be able to be balanced when he's making analysis. So, Mr. Leo, what I would say here is that the only way for these elites that the people of those two regions, from all the divisions, the tribes, the different backgrounds and cultures of the people, the only way they can regain their dignity and their, on, uh, and their honor is for them to stand with their people. That simply means be able to tell the government what really is the price of the people and they stand with their people. It doesn't take what is going to happen to them, but they must be able to stand and speak the truth. Because when their consciences and their minds have been compromised, that is when the society rejects them. And do not forget that we have elites also in those two regions whereby these are custodians of the people's identity and culture and tradition, which is very important. This, this, this is a whole betrayal to a people's a, a, a culture for, that has been kept for so many years that have been entrusted in the hands of one man and then he just dumps it all away. 
get into another uh, a system and begins to disfavor his own people. So these are the elites that I felt that we were talking about, and these were the elites that the people of those two regions were so much looking up to. We saw from Vim, okay, those are elites. Those are people that a clan, a whole group of people of different villages were looking up to. So we need elites like we saw here with um, um, this uh, senator. on the, That was the last program we had here last time. Bela Mokicha. Bela Mokicha, those are elites. You saw them speaking out the minds of the people. Mm -hmm. So we cannot just classify them when we have three definitions in which we can uh, uh, we can define who an elite is. So these are the people that we can say that the people of FACO are looking up to. And they are speaking the minds of the people from those regions. So let all be balanced because okay. people like Padi Asanga, they feel that okay. federation okay. should have been a solution in okay. Cameroon. Okay. Look and at Nigeria. Nigeria has federation. But there's still crisis, so it doesn't okay. matter they, 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 what you yeah, have. They see, uh, they see uh, the threat of uh, cessation in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and there's Boko Haram of exactly. not even in the Federation. Let us take this last uh, reaction uh, from Mr. Sama Aba Mungwa. Um, welcome back to you, and uh, thank you for having me on this second topic. Uh, which is a very sensitive one, and given the uh, the rule that uh, those that we commonly call elites have played uh, either in the development or the destruction of their communities. Uh, fundamentally, the the most basic uh, problem with this issue is we have to first of all look at uh, who is an elite, who qualifies to fall in that elite category, what does it take to be qualified as an elite, uh, how do we become members of an elite, uh, uh, who defines an elite, uh, how they are selected and how they are created. And that is where uh, we have an issue. So that before we even talk of their role and whether it is possible for them to regain their lost glory, we, uh, we need to first of all examine the aspect of elite legitimacy. Elite legitimacy. Uh, do, they, do those that we call elites, do they have legitimacy? And that goes back to their selection and their inclusion into the class called elites. How are most of them selected? How do they grow or how do they attain promotion to that class that a community would identify them as members of, as their representative members and those behind whom they can rally? One thing you should bear with me is that a large proportion of those that we call community elites are are simply uh, creations of the system or fabrications of the system uh, should I say caricatures of the system who more or less a majority of whom do not enjoy any amount of legitimacy because of the mode of their selection and their inclusion into that class look back into our communities. You would find just a few who have excelled and have gained accession into that class through hard work. Look at their parkour, as they would say. Look at their trajectory, where they have come from, what they have done, their impactfulness on their communities. Take the singular case of this uh, young dynamic member of parliament from uh, Nkambe, Honorable Ngala, for example. Permit me use him as an example. He would take an order tax for any other politician to beat the records of that gentleman in his constituency because he became an elite through hard work, through contributions towards the development of his community. But you find a good number who are those that I call caricatures of the system because the system automatically made them elites 
either through an appointment or some promotion by godfathers within the system. Those are those who enjoy the title of elite but do not enjoy the legitimacy that goes with it. And that is why I think that the question you, you asked, if elites of the Northwest and the Southwest will be able to regain lost glory, did they enjoy the glories before? A man who never had legitimacy of his people was simply living a false life and was never an elite representing that community. And so it becomes difficult for him to go back to regain what he did not have. Okay, um, that was uh, Sama Abamugwa coming in there from Boya. We unfortunately have to end at this uh, level. Padia Sanga, we want to say we are grateful you took part in today's edition of the program. Yes, uh, no, I am very, very grateful. I thought you had forgotten me, but I know that my major prime is the anglophone voice, and uh, I have the basket mouth, and this is the only place that I can come and run my basket mouth. And to conclude, to conclude, Mr. Leo, uh, we should not forget, we should not forget that um, the anglophone problem was, um, was, 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 was exacerbated by people who we, 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 we saw as elites. And this concept of elite by appointment, elite by induction, elite by decree doesn't work. I I don't I don't agree. Uh, I don't partially. I don't agree with everybody who sits on the panel. But your last panelist was very very uh, was very very pertinent. The man from Boya. I forget his name. Mr. Sama. I want to congratulate him for his pertinent. Yes, yes, for his pertinent argument. And he made it very clear that you are an, an elite by virtue of what the way you impact your community. And by, in, by induction, you become a leader. I don't believe in elitism. Elitism is a concept that was brought into our community. And when you went into the court of the, the king, you became and you sat and ate with the king. The king tell, told you, take my letter and go and give to this person. And then you become an elite. That's how all of these people who are appointed are. Okay. And they come and buddy, take, buddy. It's short the chef de l'état. Come the chef de l'état, Adi. Uh, it buddy. doesn't work like that. But like, Leo, Leo, please. Buddy, buddy, we are out yes, of time. Please, we, are, we are 15 minutes out of. <laughs> please, we have to end here. Sorry. I was just saying thank you for participating. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you very much. I want to congratulate you. Give the anglophone the voices and empower the youth, empower the new generation. Forget about these old people, forget about these appointed elites, and you people on the ground should take the mantle and let us follow you, not us giving you injunctions. Okay. Thank you and thank you very much indeed. Bye bye. Thank you, uh, Padi Asanga. Thank you uh, for coming. Yeah, um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Liu. It's a wonderful moment I've had here so far. I just want to end by saying that. Um, we have it as a duty to educate the people, understand exactly what is needed of them to build Cameroon. Uh, let me just share this, please, for a few seconds. Please, yes, 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 that. just for a few seconds. I remember that in 2014, thanks to what we did in my 16, the young people came and said, because prior to the uh, um, anniversary, the 50th anniversary, some companies were charged with uh, um, entering the roads in Boya. And some of us, the young ones, we came out and said, this is what you have to do. And before I knew it, I went out for work. Before I could even return, I found some youth in front of my door saying that you could represent we when that company, they come from more talk how they get for manage the Wakwata. Okay. Yes. So we should just continue with such mind. But I want to believe that the elites have lost their glory, but it will be difficult thank for them you. to redeem thank it. Thank you, uh, Mr. George. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you, Leo. I think uh, the end point I want to propose now is that especially those of the Anglophones who are economically endowed, mm. let other Anglophones patronize their businesses mm. so that they can have many other millionaires. That poverty will be not a reason for people to take arms. They should, they should patronize uh, my media prime. Support us. We need support, please. So you, you support us. Uh, thank you for coming. Okay, and uh, to you, Andrew Natemebaku, thank you for coming. Thank you very much. I don't think that we should uh, put our blames now on the chief or the rather the elites 
we, we know where our problem is. Let us not carry our problem and put where the problem is not. Thank you very much. <laughs> they accepted the, the appointment, eh? They should also bear. Um, it's, it's not only. They will, they will not bear all the, the responsibility <laughs> or all the. Burden. Okay, uh, we want to say thank you to you all who took time off to watch uh, the program. Thank you to you, Desmond and Eli and uh, Bertrand Noel. We quickly say thank you to you, Tabitha and Brian, who is supervising the work we do out here. Stay blessed. Bye bye.